Welcome to Vancouver Business Network, where entrepreneurs learn, network, and grow. I am Roger Killen, the organizer. This talk is brought to you by Ion Connect. This state-of-the-art co-working space and tech lab helps grow innovative ideas from applied research and development, testing and engineering qualification, to commercialization and market launch. Our speaker is Charmaine Hammond. Charmaine helps entrepreneurs build collaboration and sponsorship into their business models. Her clients are having huge success with both cash and in-kind sponsorship deals. Vancouver Business Network uh, 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 members and most welcome guests, I invite you now to put your hands together and give Charmaine Hammond a warm Vancouver Business Network. <laughs> Well, it's a pleasure being here talking about sponsorship because this is a really important discussion for all of you that are entrepreneurs, speakers, authors, coaches, and as well as nonprofits and service clubs. So tonight, I wanted to mention that there, we have a free ebook on raiseadream.com. It's right on the homepage. You might want to go and download that. It goes through some of the information that we're talking about today, and you'll see some of the uh, slides that we are, not the slides, but the model that I speak about is actually in the ebook. That's raisedream.com. So let's dive in. We're going to be talking about what sponsorship is and what sponsorship is not, because there's a lot of mistakes being made out there. And I want to ensure that as you go out and start building collaborations, building partners and sponsorship arrangements, that you actually don't make those mistakes. That'll be one way that you stand out to all sponsors and brands. We'll talk about how sponsorship and collaboration can actually grow your business, expand your reach, and bring in more income. So how many of you like that part? <laughs> <laughs> All right, and we're gonna go over what we have in Raise a Dream as a seven-step model. Both Rebecca Kirstein, my business partner, and I have been working in the area of sponsorship for a long time, and we discovered that when we met one another, we were using the same process, so we put a model around this and it works and our clients are having a lot of success. We'll also talk about, in addition to the mistakes, we're gonna talk about some of the things that entrepreneurs get stuck on, like what holds them back from getting sponsorship so that you don't get stuck, you can just move forward. And I always encourage people to start tonight. So your homework will start tonight or for those of you watching this, you will start when you <laughs> finish the video. And then we're also going to talk about leveraging relationships you already have. This is one of my favorite pieces to talk about because each of you is incredibly connected. And sometimes we don't actually know how connected we are. And a big part of sponsorship and collaboration is actually leveraging the partnerships and collaboration that you already have in place, but also the relationships. And the first 40 sponsors that I brought into my business, this goes way back to about 2010 when I was launching my first book and the cost of the launch was getting quite significant. We wanted to do a tour and all kinds of events. And all of the 40 sponsors that we brought in were all people I had in business relationships. Many that I had met in groups just like this. So the power of relationship is critical when we talk about collaboration sponsorship. So the model is going to help you build income, influence, and impact. There's a lot of speakers, there's a lot of authors that are not leveraging sponsorship. And at Raise a Dream, we always talk about this. It takes a team to raise a dream. So let me get you all to say that out loud. We're going to do some repeating back and forth so I can keep you energized tonight. So it takes a team to raise a dream, if you all want to say that back. Out loud. Awesome. All right. Let's dive in. What sponsorship is and is not. And if some of this is resonating for you, if you've heard this, feel free to nod or put your hand up so I know you're with me. Sponsorship is actually what we call a marketing relationship. This is really important. How you think about sponsorship is going to shape how you talk to brands and sponsors. It's going to shape how you build relationships, and it might predict where some of the errors are going to be, and that's what we want to avoid with you. So sponsorship is a marketing relationship. 
businesses sponsor things, projects, people, initiatives, movements, authors, launches, all kinds of things because they're looking for something in return. So sponsorship is not free money. It's not a grant. It's not an investment. It's a marketing relationship. So say out loud, sponsorship is a marketing relationship. Sponsorship is a marketing relationship. Awesome. And there's two kinds. When we talk about sponsorship tonight, we're going to talk about two types of sponsorship, one being in kind and the other is cash. Now cash is probably self-explanatory in terms of what that means. In-kind sponsorship means where a company, a business, a brand provides you with something in exchange for something. So we actually have sponsors tonight. What have you heard tonight about sponsors? So say again. The food sponsor. So we have a food sponsor tonight. And what else? We have a venue sponsor tonight. So those are great examples of where we have in-kind sponsorship. And as some of you talked about events, that some of you are hosting events, there's lots of opportunities to bring in both in-kind and cash sponsorship into events. So let's out loud, and if for those of you that are watching the video later, you can do this uh, just having a conversation in your head or with other people you know. But what we want to do is have what we call an idea circle. So let's get a list going of what are the types of things that could be sponsored. So I'll start with a few. And then I'm going to invite you to share what else you think could be sponsored. And I'll repeat that so that it's clear for the video. So some of the things that I have had sponsored in my business over the last um, many, many years are things like clothing and hair. I don't mean sponsored hair, but hairstyles and hair products, jewelry, travel. So from a Winnebago to um, hotels to bus fares to food when I'm traveling, photography, videography, marketing and support, and those are just a few things. So all of you, what else could be sponsored? What could sponsors provide in kind? Equipment rental or use of equipment. Equipment rental or use of equipment. And we see that a lot at events, don't we, Chris, where, where sponsors come on and they're providing equipment, whether that's AV, whether it's sound, whether it's technology, lighting, and the list goes on. So I love that. Equipment. What else can be sponsored? Roger. A gift to a company, a ticket? Yes. Yes. Ticket includes a gift? Absolutely. Ticket includes gifts. Absolutely. And you actually brought up another point in there, Roger, that often what is being sponsored is gifts gifts for speakers, gifts for attendees. We've all gone to conferences where you walk out with what? A swag bag, and that's full of gifts. And some of you were talking about that earlier. What else can be sponsored? Yes. Car. A car. Vehicle. Yes, absolutely. We had a Winnebago sponsored. I, we have clients who have cars sponsored. So vehicles. Roger? You go to another city and you need hotel space. A chain could, if you do a number of these, could be a package of room nights. Absolutely. So for those of you that are traveling or perhaps you're hosting events in multiple locations or cities, there could be a venue that provides you with your accommodation, but also the event space that you need. Can we also volunteer? Companies can sponsor their employees to help at this event? Absolutely. I hosted a really huge event a number of years ago. And one of the, the companies, a very large Canadian company, came on and they provided 25 employees for three days, 12 hours a day. Now, for those of you who organize <laughs> events, <laughs> you know what a win that is, right? <laughs> to have 25 people that are there. But in addition to that, they also sponsored all the PR. So they did all the outreach to media. They did the press releases. They also gave their videographer team to video the event, their photography team. Isn't that huge? That, and that was all in kind. There was no check written. Now imagine that of the, uh, us for hosting the event, all of the things that were not having to be paid for, but also that peace of mind that we had dedicated volunteers for three days that were really behind this event. Anything else that you think could be sponsored? Or is it bring enough ideas for you? Yes. Sponsor and sponsor. Oh, yeah. 
spa services. Uh, and actually, you kind of get me thinking personal health care, any kind of health care products. Uh, we you know, use a different word this time, contract. Contract, so yes. We call it contract, so we would pocket for, you know, space in the hotel uh, for media coverage, for advertising, yes. radio people get listening to the world contract for ever. And so, you know, you get a spot on the radio to advertise. You get signed or exchange for seating on the spot. Absolutely. Right. So Bill's talking about another term that you hear in sponsorship and in marketing and advertising, which is contra. And we often see that with media. And um, really what we're talking about is a collaboration, right? Beautiful. So why would a sponsor say yes? This is really important. And it's probably one of the most common questions that Rebecca and I get all the time. Because people will say things like, I'm just starting out. Why would a sponsor say yes to me? Or this is the first time I'm holding this event. Why would a sponsor say yes to me? Or I've never done sponsorship before. I don't have a track record. I'm looking for my first sponsor. Why would they say yes? Any thoughts on why you think a company, a brand, would be interested in building a marketing relationship with you? Why might they say yes to you? Depends on the cause or the story that uh, the individual tells to the company. Yes, so the cause or the story that's being shared by you, and we're going to call you the sponsor seeker. So by the sponsor seeker to that company or brand, the sponsor. So your mission, the purpose, the story behind it, yes. Exposure. Yes, a lot of times companies are looking for exposure. And exposure can be sort of, uh, it can have layers. It might be exposure to a new audience. Maybe they're releasing a product or a service that's to a new audience that's different to, than the audience they've dealt with in the past. So exposure. It might be that they've got extensive background marketing to a certain group, but now they have a new product to introduce. So exposure, brand awareness is another term you will hear. What else are sponsors looking for, Roger? Sharing of values so they can demonstrate to their audience that they're into your values. Yes. Sharing of values, and sometimes out of that, for the company, for the sponsor, comes goodwill. So they're perceived by the community um, in a way that is a company with value, a company with a, a, a mission for doing good in the world, a force for good. Yes? Uh, connection. Yes. Because if, for example, they sponsor a uh, sponsor event, maybe in the future they will be looking for an event planner where they will be Right. Yes. So sometimes sponsors are looking for connection. Reach. Reach. Absolutely. Sometimes sponsors, they can be a really, really big, successful company, but struggle with reach because their brand might be hard to put in front of certain audiences on social media. So reach is really important. And I want to mention at this point that one of the, um, one of the tasks for all of you when you leave here, when you finish watching this video, is to really spend time building and expanding your reach as a company, as a business, as an entrepreneur. LinkedIn, and we were talking about LinkedIn, LinkedIn is one of the most powerful tools when it comes to sponsorship. And it's where I find probably 75% of the decision makers that I need to connect with is through LinkedIn. And I'm pointing at you because you've written a book about this, right? Um, so with why a sponsor says yes is they're looking for something specific. Let me talk about mistake number one. Sponsor seekers often assume they know what the sponsor wants. We assume they want more sales. They, we assume they want reach. We assume that they want to get in front of a certain audience and we know what that audience is. The number one way to find out why a sponsor might say yes to you is to ask them what's important. This is why you're going to hear me saying over and over again, sponsorship is a marketing relationship. relationship. Absolutely. This is not you selling <laughs> something to the sponsor. This is you building a relationship with the company to see if there's some alignment that could happen, some synergy, a way that you could help the sponsor at the same time they're helping you. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So that's how I want you to think that it's not a handout. We're not going for charity or donations. We are looking to build a marketing relationship. And hopefully when that sponsor says yes, 
they're going to be a sponsor that comes back year after year after year and continues working with you. I've had my printing sponsor now, I think we're on eight years together. That's a long time. And when I asked her why does she continue to be my sponsor, she said something to the effect of, Charmaine, I stopped counting long ago. The ROI, what's ROI? <laughs> Return on investment. She said, I stopped counting ROI years ago. The value for her in being a sponsor for my business and for the projects I was doing was so significant because I got her in front of the audiences that were important to her. I understood what her needs were. I built a what? A relationship with her. So on our website, we actually have an example of documents of why a sponsor might say yes to you. Here's the seven step model. Once you know this model, believe me, it is a wash, rinse, repeat sort of model. It's seven steps that you'll be able to apply over and over and over again. It's just that the conversation's different. The project you're talking to the sponsor about might be a little bit different but it's the same step. And it starts with what Rebecca and I raise a dream called MVP. Now, we know what does MVP stand for normally? So that is true. You, <laughs> but you know, what's that? Minimum viable product. Minimum viable, it stands for that as well. And in our case, it stands for mindset, value, and preparing and practice. Two Ps there. So the mindset, this is really important. We talked about sponsorship being a marketing relationship, that's the mindset we have to take into conversations when we're researching brands and when we're having relationship building conversations with them. We have to look at this, that the mindset is I'm not asking for a handout because when we ask for a handout, what's the emotion that goes with that? Poverty. We feel like poverty, scarcity, we feel guilty. And so imagine that this important project you're working on is now weakened because of how we showed up. So mindset is about, this is a business relationship. This is a business transaction, a marketing relationship where together the sponsor can help us and we can help the sponsor meet some of their goals. The value is knowing the value you bring to sponsors. This is another mistake that a lot of sponsor seekers make. They wanna jump right into the ask and they haven't thought about what do I have? that could help the sponsor. So let's talk about that for just a minute. What are some of the things that you, uh, here in the room tonight and for you watching the video later, what do you have of value that a sponsor, a company, a brand might be interested in? Blogger, my best friend. <laughs> <laughs> and we know that Roger knows everyone. <laughs> so your connections, is that right, Nathan? Like you have a lot of connections. A couple of people. Yeah, you have connections and so, that might be something that you bring of value to a sponsor. What else do you have of value in your business? Creativity. Creativity, absolutely. Credibility. Credibility. Professionalism. Yes. Integrity. Yes, all those, so professionalism, credibility, integrity, all those um, personality traits, I'll call them, are hugely important. Now let's dive a little deeper on this conversation. Let's talk about what we call your assets. I'm not talking about money in the bank and how many cars you own. That's not what I mean. I'm talking about what are your professional business assets? Here's one. How many of you have a web page? So that's an example. What else do you have? I, and I saw your hand up, but I know you have a book. So I have a community. <laughs> you have a community. Absolutely. So you have a community of followers. You might have a book. What else might be of interest that you have of value to offer a sponsor? Monica, let me go there. Experience, yes. Absolutely, and please never underestimate how important and valuable that experience is. If you look back over the last one year, five year, 15 years of what it took you to get where you are today in terms of the struggles that you've had, the learnings that you've had, you might have had to pay into your own education and take workshops or webinars or courses or um, you know, post-secondary education to learn what you do. So all of that builds experience. Monica. Yeah, it's probably a group of people that have um, a certain challenge that might be matching what the sponsor is looking for because they tailor maybe a different service or product to that particular group with that challenge. Yes, so 
you might have an audience that a sponsor is really interested in, is what Monica was saying. You might have an audience that that sponsor is really interested in. Roger? Capacity. Capacity. Tell me what you mean by that. Given all your history, all your attributes, the sponsor might want to go somewhere and you have the capacity to go there with the sponsor. Yes, capacity, beautiful. Abilities. Yeah, the abilities that you have. How many of you ever have the opportunity to be on media? <coughs> Wonderful. Media is a great benefit for one of the sponsors I had during my Million Acts of Kindness tour received about $300,000 worth of media because every time I was on media and our big Winnebago pulled up, what do you think the TV crews did? What did they film? Winnebago. Us driving up in the Winnebago with all the logos on it. And then, of course, when we talked about our tour, we shared stories about our sponsors. We didn't say things like, we wanna thank our sponsors. We shared meaningful stories that connected the brand to the viewing audience at home. If they were to go and purchase all of those moments that we gave them on TV, it probably would have been about $300,000. So they certainly got their ROI, as did all the other sponsors that were involved in that. So what about a blog? Who's got a blog? Anybody write articles? Okay, how many of you are on more than one social media platform? Okay, does anyone do videos or Facebook Lives? These are all things that a sponsor might feel are of value to them. And the last part is learning this model, preparing for relationship building, preparing to have these conversations with sponsors that we're going to talk about in a minute, and practicing. One of the homework exercises that I think is really powerful is to actually summarize your business or your project. So for example, if you have an event coming up, to be able to share with somebody a description of your event that is two minutes or less. And the reason I say that is when we get on sponsor calls with new brands that we're building a relationship, often the call is 20 minutes to half an hour. We're gonna talk about discovery calls in a minute, but we've gotta be really succinct at sharing who we are, what we do, and what projects we're working on in a bite-sized piece of information for two reasons. One of them is we don't want to provide all the details without hearing the sponsor talk because we might then be providing all kinds of details that are not relevant to them. They're not interested in. And then what response might they have about our project? They say, no, it's not a fit. And it could be a fit. It's just that we gave them the wrong information because we didn't take time to get to know them. And the second part of practicing and preparing is that we've really got to be good at conversing with people. So for those of you that get a little squeamish with phone calls and having conversations with people that you've never met, does anyone get like that? Okay, here's your challenge. You have to go talk to strangers every day. <laughs> so when you're in the grocery store, have a conversation with the person in the lineup. Because every time you talk to a sponsor, and Roger, you've done lots of sponsorships, is this true? You're talking to someone that you've never met many times. So there is that little bit of awkwardness for many of us. So practice talking to strangers. And then I'm going to show you the model that will help you get there. So okay. what's... I just thought yes. another asset. That oh, another asset. Have, and that's the first four seconds of every video is available for sponsors, um, logo URL. Yes. The first four seconds on videos is available for sponsor URLs logos, any kind of promotion. And you do that with, do you do that with yours, Roger? I do that with Get Inspired Talk. Yeah, with Get Inspired Talk, great. So seven step model. I'm gonna tell you what the model is and you can see that on the screen, but we're only gonna focus on the first couple of steps because if you don't land the first couple of steps, the rest of them are not gonna work very well for you. So what is the first step, please? Identify and research. Right, identify and research. So the first thing we have to do is identify the companies where we think there could be a fit, where we resonate with. Maybe there's some shared values. Maybe it's our dream sponsor, that brand that we really want to be aligned with. So we identify and create a list of those businesses. I really encourage you to look close to home. A lot of times what people do is they start writing down 
all of the international brands that they'd love to be connected with. And that's awesome. Those international brands are often working two and three years out. So I just had a, a sponsorship conversation today with an international brand and they are making decisions for 21, 20, uh, uh, 2021. 2019, 2020 is all spent. So if I have a project coming up in eight months, will I get sponsored from that company? No. Probably not. So we need to understand that the larger the sponsor, often the longer the time they need, the longer lead time. So always look close to home. It's so much easier to build relationships with the companies and brands that are in your community. And I mean in your community and also the community that you live. That's where we start. Identify and research. Um, what's to, to, like you you say a large company is usually two years ahead. Um, what what would be a, like for me if I say I run the best festival? We're only a like year ahead. Yeah. So what kind of company would be a year ahead versus you? How we, right. How we don't be able to pull up or find that information? Yes. Yeah, so say like name an international brand. I am. Yeah. So IBM is probably going to be harder to bring on board because they're a much bigger company that's working internationally. However, there are ways to build relationships with IBM in your own community. And this is what I always say, instead of leaping forward and going to the head office at the national level, when you're trying to build the relationship, you want to talk to IBM in your own community. That's where we start. Same thing, we had a client who said, I really want to have Lululemon as a sponsor. She does a lot of work in health and fitness. So she started looking up Lululemon corporate. And I said, well, Lululemon corporate at the head office is, is dealing with a lot of sponsorships that are pretty big in size. I thought, what would happen if you went down to your local Lululemon stores and built a relationship with them? And what's happening is that those managers are now looking at, hey, maybe there's potential for a regional project. And who better to bring that sponsor seeker in front of the regional manager but Lululemon managers, right? So that's where leveraging relationships is important. So start close to home, start local, identify, and let's talk about how you research them because the research is critical. This will shape how your phone call goes and whether you get phone call number two. Sponsorships generally do not happen in one phone call. It's a series of relationship building steps and a series of conversations. So the research that we do is we definitely check out the brand, the company's website. Makes sense, right? That's probably one of the things that you would do. But then we immediately go on to all their social media platforms. Why are we looking at their social media platforms? See who sponsor. Say again? See who they sponsor. Yes. We're looking at what else have they sponsored? So if I was looking at a particular brand and it looked like everything they sponsor is children's sports and the project that you're working on is, is something for women's empowerment, it might become obvious earlier on that that particular sponsor, as awesome as they are, may not be a fit for your project. And then you don't have to spend time building the relationship and wasting their time and yours. What else does researching them on social media do? Okay. What they actually are looking for. Yes. When they start to someone, it will give you an idea of what they what they look for from and what they want. Absolutely. It gives you an idea of what they're looking for. It gives you an idea of what they value, what matters to them. You're gonna see repeated words. So I love to use Waves Coffee House as an example. If you go on Waves Coffee House website, they use one word in every variation possible, and that word is connection. They use connected, connectedness, connection, every form of connection. They also have pictures on their website that look like connection. So this helps you understand what's important to them. Research their website, press releases, watch their videos, look at their social media, and you research them. As soon as you find a sponsor you want to build a relationship with, start following them. Engage on their posts, but never in a way where it's like, oh, wow, that was great. Oh, and by the way, I've got this great event coming up. Never do that. What you want to do is just be a champion for them. Get in front of them by being a supporter and a champion. You slowly build that relationship if you're building that online. What's step number two? Connect, be champions. 
reach out and connect. This is, <laughs> this is where people get stuck. And a lot of entrepreneurs stay in research mode forever. How many of you have been there? It can't just be me. Yes, I see you. <laughs> so don't get stuck in research mode. You don't need a list of 874 potential sponsors. <laughs> I say that because one of our clients said, when do I stop? And I said, you stop after about 10 and start getting ready to pick up the phone. And she said, oh, I think I'm just going to try and hit 1,000. I said, well, you know, you've been at this for a long time. How about you just make a phone call? So she was nervous of the conversation. She was nervous of the relationship, but she felt like she was doing something while she was in research mode. The reason we do the research is to help that reaching out and connect be important. Now, I mentioned LinkedIn. How many of you are on LinkedIn? LinkedIn is going to be your most powerful tool for finding decision makers because this is where people get stuck. People don't know who to contact in a company. So I'm going to give you some titles. You might want to write these down. In fact, I encourage you to write them down. These are some of the titles that sponsor decision makers might have, and this varies from company to company. So some companies will not use this language at all. One of the terms is sponsorship. You'll see sponsorship manager, sponsorship director, uh, sponsorship lead. You'll also see community investment. You'll see corporate and social responsibility. That's a very big term, so is community investment. You might see public relations, and you might see marketing, brand awareness, and brand development. Those are some of the terms that the sponsors we deal with a lot um, use. So when you go into LinkedIn, you can do a search for the company, one of your dream sponsors, and punch in that title. This helps you figure out who to contact because here's what happens. If you phone up a company and you say, hi, I'd love to talk to the person that deals with sponsorship. Does anyone know what often happens? You're shaking your head. You know where I'm going with this, right? What often happens? It goes to like a mailbox that may not be answered because some sponsors, I was talking to a sponsor the other day, 15 sponsor decision makers in his office, 15, eight hours a day doing this. And they all get between 20 and 40 voicemail a day of people looking for money. And he said he alone processes 400 um, proposals a year, most of which he shreds. You want to know why I shred them? Because you don't want yours to be the shredded one, right? The number one reason he shreds the majority of proposals he gets in his company is because it says, dear sir, dear madam. Know their name. Know their name. You did not research if you put dear sir, dear madam. You missed the step. Is that fair? Yes. Do you want to know the second reason he shreds? This is a good one. So maybe they have dear Bob. That's great. But then he said, dear Bob, we have the best sponsorship opportunity for you. We can do this, this, this. We can help you with this, this, and this. And for this much money, gold, silver, and bronze, here you go. Pick a package right through the shredder. Anybody know why? Not specific enough to what they actually need. It's not specific. It wasn't customized. It was the same proposal that went out to all kinds of people. Right. So when you, uh, we, I write very few proposals. Generally, it goes from conversation to contract. Or the proposal becomes the contract. And that's because there is so much conversation going on that the sponsor works with us to create what this is going to look like, what this collaboration is going to look like. So we've got to connect. Now, I want you to know that uh, from the sponsors we talk to, sometimes it takes persistence. How many of you have reached out to sponsors before? Does it take more than one attempt, Roger? Does it take more than three attempts sometimes? Makes sometimes years. <laughs> I just finally got on the phone with a national sponsor, and I've been trying to nurture this relationship for two and a half years. And we are now at the head decision maker level. But was it worth the persistence? Yep. Absolutely, because the conversations we're having are far greater now than they would have been a year ago. So it takes persistence. So you've reached out on LinkedIn. You might say have a, have a LinkedIn message that says, I'm really interested in learning more about your brand. Notice that you didn't talk about who? You. You didn't say, I have an event, I have a book, I have a this. 
He simply said, I'm really interested in learning more about your brand. I noticed that, and you might pull something of interest that you found out from your research. And then he said, I'd love to, or I'd, I'd welcome the opportunity to hop on a quick phone call to learn more about your company. LinkedIn is the number one way I get yeses to that. Email does not work. For those of you who have done sponsorship before, have you found that? That email is, that emails uh, often are not being responded to, to set up a meeting? Yeah. And the other, re the other thing is to pick up the phone and call. And you can just say, I'd welcome the opportunity to book a short discovery call. And sometimes they'll say, great, do you have 20 minutes now? And you need to be what? Yes. Prepared. And you are, because you've already done those steps. So step number three, let's talk a little bit about this. This is the discovery call. This is another part of the process where people get nervous. Sponsor seekers get nervous. They're uncomfortable. They say things like, Charmaine, I don't know what to ask. Like I've got them on the phone and after you talk about the weather, then what? What's that next 29 minutes look like? <laughs> and be prepared, the call is gonna be probably 30 minutes or less. You wanna set your cell phone timer for 26 minutes. Everything you do from the moment you reach out to that sponsor, everything you do is showing that brand, that company, whether it's your local coffee shop or a national brand, you're showing that company how you are to do business. So everything you do is either putting in a check mark or not. So be prepared, be on time, set that timer to be able to say to the person, we're getting close to the half hour here, I just wanted to respect your time. And they love, they appreciate that. Do you appreciate that when people respect your time? Yes. Yeah. As do these sponsors. And what they really appreciate, and this is coming from sponsor interviews that we do, they love it when you've researched them, and you can ask them questions that, are, that you actually have some substance to. I noticed that on your website, and then you form a question. I was watching a particular video, and I wanted to know if this is the audience you serve. If the video looked like it was this audience, I'd love to learn more about that. They know you've researched them, because you couldn't have asked the questions otherwise. So with a discovery call, this is one of many conversations. The whole point is to learn about the sponsor, their company, their brand, what matters to them, what kind of marketing they're doing, what kind of audiences are they trying to get in front of? What are they currently doing in terms of collaboration? How do they normally collaborate in partnership or collaborate and partner with sponsor seekers? What are some of the disaster stories? So you might say something like, has there been times that your company has been in a sponsorship relationship and it didn't go well? I'd love to hear what you want to avoid. And they often have a, a story where something didn't go well and we wanna make sure that when we continue our conversations with the sponsor, that we reassure them that that mistake wouldn't happen with us. It's about building what? Trust. Trust, absolutely. Because when a sponsor either provides you a gift or service in kind or cash, and they're looking for that marketing relationship, they wanna trust that you can deliver, right? So the discovery call is more about who? Them. More about them, and they are obviously gonna turn and they're gonna say, Dennis, you know, thanks so much for asking these questions. Wow, you've really researched things. And they're gonna say, so Dennis, you know, what inspired you to call us? Or where do you see synergy? in what you're working on and what our company is doing or what prompted you to call us? Where did you see some alignment? So they want to then hear about you. This is why that short sound bite is really important. Short sound bite about you and your project. Let them ask the questions of you because their questions are gonna come from a very important place. They're coming from their place of priority, their place of budget, their place of strategic goal. So let them ask you the questions. Let them guide that part of the conversation. Another great question that I, I used this actually today three times on sponsor calls. I said, after hearing this project, what popped up for you? Were there some pieces, were some, were some areas of alignment or synergy? And they immediately pointed out where they thought they could sponsor something. So rather than me trying to figure it out, what did I do? I just asked for their help. So the question was, after hearing a little bit about this project and I could go on more about it, where were the areas of synergy or alignment that you heard that might be a fit for your company? 
And then in one case, they said, hey, you know, I don't know that this project is a fit for my department, but it is for this other department. Thank you. It is for this other department. May I make an introduction? What do you think I said? Yes. Yes. <laughs> and this is another important piece. You want to have pre-written introductions so that when a sponsor says that to you, you can immediately say, why don't I just send you over a short paragraph that just explains the real short version of what, what I explained the project to be. You tailor it and modify it how you want to send to your colleagues for these introductions. Here's mistake number I don't even know what I'm up to now. Three, four. Um, a lot of people say, great, I'll send that over to you today. And what does that entrepreneur, sponsor, seeker do? Nothing. They forget, or they don't do it, or they get busy with the next bright, shiny object. And what have you just taught the sponsor about you? Unreliable. Unreliable, Lots don't keep commitments. Great. How important is this? So see what I mean? Every step you do in this relationship building, teach your sponsors what you are like to work with. And you have so much opportunity to share the best of you with these sponsors to help find the win-win. What's step number four? The proposal. proposal. So often the proposal comes right out of that discovery call. And by call, I mean several calls. With one of the sponsors that we worked with, we had 17 phone calls before we signed the contract. 17 uh, conversations over a nine month period and then the contract was signed. I don't even think we did a proposal for that one. So sometimes it will be a lengthy process, but you keep working in partnership. And the whole goal is to find out where is the alignment between what that sponsor is looking for and how you can help them. What's step number five? Contract. Contract. Step number six? Fulfillment. Fulfillment. And I'll just talk briefly on this. Fulfillment is you delivering on what you said you're gonna deliver. So a contract, let's just talk about informal contracts. Let's go back one step for a moment. When you're working on sponsorship, let's say with your local hairstylist or the local grocery store in your community or the local coffee shop or the yoga studio, if you've got a sponsorship that's local, the contract might just be an email confirmation. You're gonna do this, I'm gonna do this, together we're gonna to do this, here's the key dates. So it might be an email conversation. The bigger the sponsor, the bigger the contract, and the more legalese the contract. Some of the sponsors you deal with, I have a lot of sponsors that have their own sponsorship contracts. Very important to get them reviewed by a lawyer, because sometimes it's kind of a generic contract that they use for all of the different sponsorships, so you need to look at which clauses don't apply to your particular project or to you as a, as a sponsor seeker. So, um, the fulfillment means you deliver and you always want to over deliver. You always want to over deliver. So I'm going to talk about recognition for a minute. Let's talk about what are some of the things we talked about brand exposure. We talked about, um, you know, putting sponsored logos somewhere, giving them gifted tickets, giving them the opportunity to connect with your audience. All of those promises and agreements that you, that you made with the sponsor, this is where those get followed up on in the fulfillment piece. So you want to really over deliver. You want to make sure that everything you've agreed to delivering, you have done that. And here's the other mistake that sponsor seekers make. If things go sideways, and I'm going to use events for a minute. How many of you uh, have ever hosted an event? All right, lots of hands in the room right now. So is it fair to say that sometimes you plan on 100 people? and 20 people show up, yep, yep. <laughs> or you plan on 10,000 people and 1,000 show up, that's fair? So if you promised a sponsor, we're gonna have 2,000 people, and you are weeks away from your event or launch, and you've got 25 people, there is one very important phone call you need to be making right then, if not sooner, preferably sooner. Who should that be to? The sponsor. Let your sponsor help you solve problems. Let your sponsor help you solve problems because they want to make sure that they get the best impact and that this is also successful for you. So let them know if in the fulfillment process, something's going wonky, something's going sideways. And what's our last step? Thank you. The thank you. So a thank you is not a singular activity. 
I'll say that again. Thank yous are not singular activities. This is not where you send the email. That is not a thank you, by the way. How many of you got a thank you by an email before? Do you feel thanked? No, it doesn't feel really personal. So a, a thank you card is one piece of it. Handwritten thank you cards are lovely. I have one sponsor who I actually just sent her, a, she's not even a sponsor yet. That's the mindset piece. But I sent a thank you card in the mail for her time on the discovery call with me. And she's been doing sponsorship for this national bank for seven years. It was the first thank you card ever she's ever received with her name on it. They passed it around her office with the 12 other staff. They shared my card a week at a time on their desk. So was that a power, that was one activity, but it goes more than that. You can do what's called a sponsor fulfillment report. Take pictures and videos and send that to your sponsors. Show them how their company was recognized in the work you did with them. Write a LinkedIn testimonial for them, a recommendation. Shout them out in social media. Thank yous occur over months and months because here's what you don't want to have happen. Let's say your project came to a completion in January and you do your thank you, maybe you sent a gift, you sent another card, it's now February, and then they hear nothing from you. For, <laughs> say that loud. Until you want more money. Until you want more money. The relationship kind of got lost, is that fair to say? And realize that while well, you're off ignoring them, they're off building other relationships with other sponsor speakers. Keep the relationship going. I just emailed a sponsor I had four years ago and said, hey, I just read this really cool article on LinkedIn and I saw your name in there. Just wanted to say hi and see how you're doing. I got a phone message back. Just saying thanks so much, that was so kind. Four years later, you know, talk about your sponsors in public. Celebrate them. It will come back to them. I honestly believe that when you put out that kind of energy, it ripples back to people. So this is the seven step <coughs> model. I know. Gosh. And then you pick up, you start it all, he says, I love it. And then you do this over and over and over again. Every single sponsor that you're going to be approaching, you do this model through. However, you might find at the discovery call that this is not a good fit for you. Maybe you're not in agreement with the sponsored values. Is that fair? You start asking questions, you're thinking, ooh, my audience isn't going to react well to that. Or, ooh. That's not the language I use, or that just doesn't feel like a fit. So you might not progress through the rest of the model. Fair? All right. So let's review these again, because these are the three takeaways that I want you all to go away and do. So let's talk about dream sponsors. How many of you, when you think about, wouldn't it be great to build a relationship with company and you fill in the line. Mm -hmm. Give me some examples, give the group some examples of companies that you would love to build a relationship with, a collaboration with, and maybe secure for sponsorship from. Let's hear a few examples of who those companies might be for you. Cineplex. Cineplex. Van City. Van City. And that could be, depending where you are in the world, that could be a different bank, it could be a service, like a credit union or, or a, brand, a national brand. Bill Gates Foundation. Bill Gates Foundation. So a foundation. Board of Trades. Board of Trades. Tourism Board. Tourism Board. Homework exercise number one is to do this. Identify 15, how many? 15. 15 companies you'd love to build a relationship with. And then I want you to just pick three. And the three that you pick might be because you actually know somebody there. Or better yet, Maybe you're going to research that bank because you actually bank there. It's a great exercise to actually look at where do you spend your own money? You're in a relationship with those companies already. This could be a starting place for you. The list of 15 dream sponsors and how many you're going to research? Three. And the ones that are closest to home and who you deal with are the ones that you start with. You want to research. Where are you going to research them? LinkedIn. LinkedIn and? Social media, their website, 
press releases, we spend anywhere from 30 minutes to two and a half hours researching a sponsor before I get on the discovery call. So it's not a quick scan as the phone is ringing. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> um, these are some of the things that you can also research. If you're at an event, research the program guides, go to the trade shows and meet the sponsors. So many people at events do not walk around the trade shows. I have met many sponsors at the trade shows. Google, Google the company. Yes. I just want to ask a question uh, about the, uh, let's say you're trying to reach out to a specific sponsor and the big corporation that is extremely busy, but at the same time, you don't want to, seems like a spammer to them, you know, following the, like on stalker, like on LinkedIn, email, like Facebook, Twitter, all over the place. Otherwise, they, they might block you. They might like, so how can you find your balance, you know? So here's the good news. Sponsorship decision makers are not doing the company link, are not doing the company Facebook. The sponsorship decision makers are not doing the Facebook social media stuff. They have a social media team doing that for them. They might go and check to see if you've been tweeting or anything about them, but so they're not seeing you in all those places. So with LinkedIn, I have one sponsor. I've now made six attempts to connect with them. And finally they got back to me. They, and they were so apologetic. I'm so sorry. I've seen your messages and I'm so busy. And at some point we just might decide maybe I'm talking to the wrong person. So you look at other people that work in the company and you can ask for an introduction to the decision maker. That's another way around that. Yeah. Chris. There, there's a small challenge occasionally when you, you uh, overreach where you're trying to get to and you reach the decision maker for the entire corporation. And he's far, far, far too busy. Yes, you've got a personal invitation you connected 15 ways and you know all the people he knows personally yeah and he's too busy legit just way too busy yes yes so what chris is saying is that sometimes the, the ceo of the company the, or the people that are very high up in a company a they're not making the decisions they have a sponsorship and a marketing team that'll make the decisions and i've had lots of conversations with national companies at the ceo level and the conversation always sounds something like this it, they might say, oh, I love this project, or this could be intriguing, but Charmaine, we have a, a team that's going to deal with this, so I'm going to bump it down to my team. And, and so, even, so getting to the CEO is not always the goal. They might be the person that signs off, but the person who brings it to the CEO is the other employee. It's a whole different dynamic, though, if the CEO is walking it down or referring it down to the sponsorship person. Yeah. That pulls a lot. It, it does. It does. It, it, so build the relationship. Recognize it might get moved down to the team that decides. But imagine when a CEO says, I've already talked to Patrick about this, and this sounds like it might fit. This is great. Uh, so now there's sort of an endorsement from leadership coming to the team. So relationship, relationship, relationship. There was a question over here, too. That's it? No? Um, do you find LinkedIn, uh, uh, LinkedIn is a better way of connecting than, say, you go to a website and then you find the PR email address and then get an email over there versus looking yeah. on? It's a more so the, solid. Yeah, the question way. is about finding the right people to reach out to LinkedIn or, or their website. Very few um, websites will have the contact person. Thanks, Roger. We'll have the contact person. Um, or it's a general email. It's not the specific person. So the more you can do to connect with the exact people in that department, the better. Okay. So I wanted to go to this question, and we're going to pull this together. What can you do to stand out, continue the relationship, and set yourself up or a yes with sponsors and partners and collaborators. So let's hear from you. What can you do to stand out from every other sponsor seeker that's calling the companies that you're interested in? What can you do to stand actually out? Actually do the fulfillment. Yes. Oh, say again. Actually do the fulfillment. Actually do the fulfillment. Keep your promises and over deliver. Yes, what else can you do? Oh, <laughs> it was so important two people had their hand up. Yes. Putting the touch after yeah. the 
stay in touch. Even if they say, no, we just got a rejection from a sponsor and I'm still in touch. And you got rejected? You get all I know. We, there's a oh. lot of no's in sponsorship. Right? No. There is. There's a lot of no's. There's also a lot of yes's. You didn't quit? No, you still keep building that relationship because you know what? The next project might be the perfect fit with them. This was just timing. Money was already spent. Roger, then Chris, little, and then Bill. A little value add tricks. Uh, uh, introduction, introdu valuable introductions. Uh, having the key person introduce, take your stage and introduce somebody. Yes. Invite that person to come and speak on your stage. So Roger is suggesting, you know, all the value add things that you do. Maybe that that potential sponsor, even if they've said no, could come and introduce somebody at one of your events. Maybe they could be showcased at your events. So look for the value added. And who did I say was next? Uh, Chris said Bill. The, if you do get a no or when you get a no, uh, if you've already set up a relationship, you've already gone way past that no already. And now you're into a problem solving relationship. If they've said no and you understand what they need, you know what they need. And if you refer them somebody that does fit, yes. you're building that relationship even further. Absolutely. So even if it's a no, you can still keep helping that sponsor through the connections you have. Yeah. Absolutely. And so there will be no's. That's okay. You've built incredible relationships that could become a yes. Bill. Um, you mentioned the ROI. One of the things that I would remind people who are in business that uh, counts on the ROI um, is to get the story from the client after you've done the event. Two questions. Why did you choose me to sponsor my event or us? The second question, what was the impact on your business? Yeah. And quantify it. So hear what the results that came back to the client. And if, if they start talking about that stuff, you're leading into the next engagement yeah. because it's going to go. And you can also prospect with that need too to other companies who are looking to sponsor. Exactly. So you, what you, so what Bill was saying with yeah, what Bill was saying is at the end of a sponsor working with you, follow up with them and do a bit of an evaluation. Ask them what was the impact on your company? Why did you choose us over other? What was the behind the decision? You know, what, where do we knock it out of the park? We have a review and learn process that's four questions. I can send that to you if you want. Just email me or message me, but the review and learn will help. What's next? So I'm going to go to questions after we close here and I'll be around, but uh, what's next? Keep the seven steps close by. When you ingrain this into your line of thinking, you will start to talk to people differently. I have found sponsors in grocery stores because I had the conversation with a stranger, but I knew that after the conversation, there was other steps I needed to do. So memorize this model, keep it handy, print it out. Um, make sure that uh, if you're an online viewer, I'll talk about how you can get in touch with me in a moment. Check in on your MVP, your mindset, your value, and how much you're practicing and preparing so that you do stand out. Take action, write that list. Of potential sponsors look at how you already have relationships with create a list of what you can offer to sponsors as value research somebody tomorrow and pick up the phone the next day so break through that discomfort it's okay if they're not interested it's okay if it's a no you can also say do you know of other companies i should be speaking to but reach out to people that you have relationships with the people that you have relationships with are gonna be the best people to connect you and to support you. So for our online audience, I encourage you to download that ebook. It's on the website, it's free. It takes you through much of what we've talked about. This is a much longer conversation that we condensed into an hour tonight. Um, you can also contact me. So if you're interested, the online viewers, if you're interested in having what we call a raise a dream strategy call, you can reach out to me on Facebook or LinkedIn or email or through our website. And I'd be happy to hop on a call and look at your sponsorship. And I really appreciate you watching this video. All right, Roger. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Dr. Min, on behalf of BBN, I thank you very much. You. You've given us perspectives that most of us had no clue were possible. Uh, yeah, that's great. Thank you. And yeah. Ion Connect, uh, we thank you very, very much for making this uh, production possible. Thank you. Okay. I'm just going to stand here with tape on my shoe. There we go.